All right. So uh, you never really want to coin out two if you can avoid it, because it gives you or gives your opponent a lot of counterplay. So I'm here much better than coining out Mechwarper, even though we do get the upside of Glazuka. I just playing this. If he pings, then that means he's playing. Um, he's giving us the initiative because he's taking up his entire turn. And if we play Mechwarper, we're just giving him a chance to reduce, um, remove our play for our turn too. And what would we do if we mech coin Mechwarper and we don't have anything to uh, Glazuka? So since we're player two, we need to find like a turn, probably like between like uh, turns two to four, to um, get ahead of him. And since this deck doesn't really have late game, we need to make sure that we do find that turn. And it's just any turn we can find uh, find him being vulnerable. So we want to keep uh, counting like what he could play. I think the coin is good. Um, here we're just gonna play the Mech Warper. And then if we have an option on turn 3 to do something like Iron Beak and Glazuka. Silences tend to do pretty well in 3 drops since they have a lot of uh, a lot of like spell like silenceable targets. Scholar Crusaders, Harvest Golems are all excellent uh, excellent targets. That's also one of them. Nice man, thank you for the sub. Welcome to the Rat Pack. Appreciate the support man. Drop the one cheese in chat. Thank you very much. So here, we could Glaive Zuka and Owl, but I think I'd rather just give him the card and play the Spider Tank for tempo. I'm not really too concerned about uh, his cards, since our plan is not to play the long game with this deck. Our plan is to um, get an early game advantage and then clear the board in the mid game while pushing in damage and then in the late game just to uh, press out the remaining amount of uh, damage points that we need to end the game. Generally, Mage is like one of our best matchups because like their flame strikes and blizzards are a little bit too slow for our game plan. Generally, we'll be pushing out damage and just going for direct damage uh, when they do have flame strike. So like on turn seven, we should be expecting to like rush out with like blue gills and reckless rocketeers with our hero power to the face, disregarding the board. So it doesn't matter if they clear at that point. So here we have a read that he doesn't have flame cannon. It's good to have these reads, and it's a very obvious read that he doesn't have flame cannon. Um, here, generally on empty board, you want to produce as much damage as you can on the board, as long as you're not playing into anything. And we're not playing against like priest or or um, or like paladin, so we don't have to play around like mid game AOE. All all mage has is um, like explosive sheep stuff, but we don't really play around that. I'll play this in the right order. It's like almost always going to be this. So we just want to maximize damage. And I'm not going to use the Glaive Zook on his face yet. We don't have another weapon. If I had another weapon in the hand, I would. But I don't think it's time yet. Ethereal Conjurer, do it. Just play out 2-3. We're not as far ahead as I hope we would be. It's because we haven't been able to use our Glaive Zuka. Still go for the 2-3 play. I guess we can start with this 3. Okay, so he doesn't have one drop. Suppose we can just trade then. The question is, do we want to hear power slow down? I don't think so. We don't quite have that much damage on the board. I will attack in here. If we didn't have this 1-1 one, one out, I would probably not attack, but he can already remove one damage. Like, he can only remove one damage is the way we should put it. So instead of him removing two with just this out, it's a little bit better this way. Okay. So at this point in the game, um, we're getting to a point where it's going to be a lot easier for the mage to unload his hand. We just want to push in face damage, and this is where we start to ignore the board now. 
So Mukla is here power and then face will be the last time uh, we do anything for the board. And now it's just planning out how to do uh, the rest of the damage to complete uh, complete the 30 onto his face. Give me a quest. Death does not scare me. Hmm. Could still go with the Mukulis play. We'd have four and five on the board. Wouldn't be able to finish off the, uh, the questing though. I think it's a little bit greedy to go for the 50-50 deadly. Although it's... Like, it's not so bad leaving the 2-8 up. We could always deadly and if it hits here we can always just silence and push through damage to his face. I, I'm okay with that. The upside is getting the guy. We lose the same thing, which is Flame Strike, and there's no real good play, good play around Flame Strike. So we got the worst result. So, just disregard the board, start hitting him in. So at this point, once again, just need to find a way to do 8 damage. We uh, lost the bluegill from the uh, Gnomish, turned into a chicken. We have one Glaivezuka and one Igorn Bow and one Reckless Rocketeer for direct damage. And for fading and stalling, we have two multi shots and one more deadly, I believe. You want it? I So like any of those like removal or direct damage draws are really good. The like Cafford deck is good draws now. So I'll give him this chicken. Okay, it's not mirror. There's some ordering stuff we could have thought about here. Cause we don't want want to like give him a taunt, but also we kinda wanna clear a little bit in case it's ice block. But he can't really kill us in one turn, so I don't think there's too much to worry about here. I'll do this face attack first. And I'll follow it up with this. Okay. Guess we can just do this. Okay, so it was ice block. So we found we found a good uh, in between to clear his board and also pop the ice block, and that's what I was looking for in the case it was ice block, and it was. So here he not only has to clear the board, but he also has to heal because of our hero power. So this always happens, so we'll start with it. And also gotta be careful of Ice Barrier. So you never really wanna like hit him first. Like in the case of Ice Barrier, we'd still win. Because we have so much damage, but you gotta keep that in mind. Like your hero power as Hunter does not trigger the Ice Barrier to give him armor. But uh, like attacking with a minion or a weapon does. So yeah, that's a really good matchup for us. The only thing we're really scared of facing up against is like Rogue or, uh, Rogue or Paladin uh, or Shaman even. Those are the best matchups, uh, or like the worst matchups for us. Since they have a lot of cheap removal cards, like any early game momentum that we try to get, and that's how we win, is by pushing our early game momentum into uh, um, like face damage in the mid game. Um, they can stop that completely. So if we can avoid those three classes, then this deck is really good. Like Priest and Druids and Mages are kind of like free wins. Warlock... Warlock is okay. I'd say it's like half and half. Warlocks have pretty good comeback mechanisms, but they do also take a lot of face damage with a lot of their cards. Keep this. But I wouldn't mind facing just Warlocks up until 12 wins. So I guess it's a better matchup than uh, than average. Just because like if we face up against a good Paladin deck, you just lose. There's no way that a deck like this can beat... Uh, uh, a good paladin opener. You just lose on turn four. <laughs> it's 
So once again, this goes along with what we were talking about um, last game. We don't really want to coin out this because it gives them counterplay with Dark Bomb. Uh, assuming he just passes here, of course. So we just want to wait for a good turn where we can't get our coin countered. That's the way to think about it is you just don't want coin to get countered. Four, Elven Archer. Soulfire. Food Doctor. Okay. I kind of like Worgen and into Glazuka. That sets us up. And also, he doesn't have counterplay on Worgen. This can also deal with the 2 3. If he played a 2 3, we'll be hidden with 3 1 into it, possibly. So here now we're thinking about like setting up a good uh, good hand up against this three drop. Bazooka hit, give us a three one and a two attack weapon. It's okay. What about stone center truck hit? Give us a body so we can glaze Zuka and we can next turn we could even glaze Zuka coin to Red Corsair. We could have a four three and a two three or a three three and three three. I think I like the Glaive Zuka setup better. Definitely want to save the coin so we can use the Dread Corsair with it. And that's another thing to consider. His plays are really slow. Maybe you want to play around like Ooze and make sure we get these two guys at the same time. We'll go for that. So this guarantees that we'll get the discount from the Dread Corsair. Okay, we'll just make a, a wall here. Gets Warlock, we do a little bit less board control and more more face hitting. Um, like a little bit less, uh, we don't mind if he gets better trades. It tends to like work out because Warlocks want to use their hero power in the late game. So like even though they get a little bit of a board advantage, uh, card advantage, and tempo advantage from making good board trades, um, works out because they can't use their hero power. So you would always kind of like play into Shattered Sun and like Defender of Argus against Warlock. It tends to pay pay for itself. Let's play two under drops here. Hmm. Tink Master is pretty interesting. I don't want to take Tink, it's just fun. Dragonhawk probably is better. I'm going to take Tink. Now we can Mech Warper. Kind of does the same thing as Web Spinner. They just kind of just died to the 4-3. Next turn, 3-5. It's a play. I'll do this. <laughs> and we don't want a multi-shot here. It's, it just doesn't get, a, get us ahead. It's like if we multi-shot, we're giving him the board advantage. I want to find a better turn for it. I hunt alone. I actually don't hate uh I don't hate Tink Master here. Now even if it like worst result is turns this into 5-5. Five five, and it's not 5-5 five is not that much worse or like that much better than Powder Shredder. 
I'll go for it. And it has a chance to turn our 1-1 into a 5-5-2. So that's pretty ideal. So that's one of the really good results. It's either that or turning our web spinner to a 5-5. I like this slightly better than turning our web spinner to a 5-5 since we're getting low on cards and the web spinner could still draw us this way. So he wants to tap. I think we let him. I'll let him tap. It's like he's helping us kill him. Generally, you should always. Like, Tink Master is so good in classes that run a lot of 1-1s. Like, Warlock is a class that, you know, you get implosions and movement ganks. Just gives you that increased chance of a positive result. We need to uh, use the multi shot yet. Just clear a little bit. This way, we know, like, we kind of know where both of these guys are gonna go in here, here. And we have damage still to go into his face next turn. And we're letting him, once again, we're not trading that much. We're only making, we're doing minimalistic trading and trying to push in as much damage as we can. that sound. <sighs> Either he has no good plays or too many good plays. Dalgard? Six, eight, ten. So we definitely want to hero power. Kind of want to remove some damage from his side. Warlocks can be very bursty. I'll run these two in. No multi shot. Just because uh, he might get something disgusting out of the void collar, like a taunt. That may be even reason to just hit face and hero power. I guess if if it hits here, the multi shot, like we wouldn't trade in here, right? No. So I'll do this. So yeah, definitely like setting him up like one or like a point where you can't tap is a priority. And also like at this point you don't want to Savannah high main because the only way you would lose, you don't, you're not going to lose your board and you don't need any more damage. You'd only lose to him having lethal. And it's not impossible, especially in an arena setting where they, um, where Warlock's cards can count for like on like, like four damage each. Wow. Okay. So this is this is our worst matchup. Like Shaman and Rogue are up there, but Paladin is by far the worst. They have a lot of good early game uh, cards that counter our early game, and then in mid game they have a lot of heals and removal. In the late game they have big heal cards, like Guardian of Kings. Gotta and you also have to like think about the reason why like Shaman and Paladin are so good. 
Another reason is um, it's like they totem or they hear power and then you have to clear those because they end up buffing those guys. So you end up healing a lot through just us killing the 1-1s. One so there's not really a bad opener or like a bad hand for, for those classes. Because hear power is always healing them. Okay. So I'm going to play this in this order. I'm going to kill it and then play this to check repentance. It's more of an like, information gathering thing. It's not that I wanted to get Repentance, I just want to make sure I know if it's Repentance or not. That way I know if it's like Noble Sack or Revenge or not. <laughs> okay. So, here we have a pretty good uh, answer to... To, um, noble sack. So I'll hit here first for noble sack. Okay, and now we can hit here. I just don't want this guy to die. So we now now we know it's not repentance. It's not eye for night. It's not noble sack. It's not redemption. That leaves compare spirit, avenge, and uh, sacred trial. So out of those, most likely, especially at ten wins, it's gonna be avenge because the other two are pretty garbage. So at this point, I'm pretty much going to play in a way where I assume it's Avenge and try to make the best trade with it being Avenge. Oh. Well. Yeah. I... Yeah. I can't. There's nothing to say. I don't, I'm just going to do that. And since that just happened... It's fine. Oh, it's actually Sacred Trial. Hmm. That doesn't actually make me happy. Like he's never gonna play into it, since he he like knows it's Sacred Trial. I think we Glaive Zuka first and lost Tall Strider. Like, we definitely have to get this out so we can start hand mastering. Okay. I'll even save this guy in case Consecration. If it didn't play into Consecration, I would definitely try to save a charge of my weapon, but since there's 2 3, I think it's fair. And we should be able to win off the momentum, Houndmaster. Sacred Trial is not awful though. Like if you consider like our position in the game, like soon we're gonna it's, like forget about our board and we're gonna start just going face. And that's the point where he has to like make a, a big turn to finish this off before he gets finished off by our hero power. So he needs to start flooding, and then he'll need to push in damage. If he doesn't have a good card to flood with, that will give him a lot of problems. So it's not awful. Definitely want to start uh, pushing damage out. We'll do this. We'll get our weapon. So at this point, this is called the uh, uh, the switch. You make the switch here. So the switch pretty much is you um, forgetting about board control, and then just you know, letting him do whatever he wants to get good trades and just going for face damage. It's a critical point in the game where, you know, if you're playing a face class, you you know it's a lot, you get a lot more face damage out of it and you can finish out the game before our, your opponent's board control uh, affects the outcome of the game. So since we have Ecohorn Bow and a pretty big lead on the board, I think it's good to make the switch at the spot. So this guy has a pretty good deck, like two Elders, Consecrations. He didn't have like the key cards that really screw us. It's not really like the Guardian of Kings or the uh, like True Silver or Consecrations. It's like Shield of Mini and Muster that stop us in the early game. So like not a bad deck. But we did get a um, pretty good hand against this guy too.
All right, last game. Rexa versus Gul'dan. Your soul shall be mine. Let the hunt begin. I want to look for a better hand than this. Okay. Okay, hand. We just need to draw into a two drop start. Ideally, a one drop start, but. You know what the sad thing is? This is the first time we played Hunter since the um, the 93 and 100, 110 attempt. So we had Hunter and Warrior as a choice. If we picked Hunter, and it's obviously it's not that's not how it works. But obviously this isn't the deck, and this aren't these aren't like the opponents, and these aren't the games that we would have had. But if we picked Hunter, if we would have known Hunter would have been 12 or 11, we would have gotten 110. We actually would have gotten 104 and 10. 105 and 10. So that's unfortunate. Hopefully he doesn't have any more one drops in this. He does. This guy has a really zooey deck. If we can hit Houndmaster, that'd be great. We don't have a high health four drop. No Yeti, no Shredder. And we are behind on the board. Okay. It looks like we'll be fine. Lost Rider trades pretty well against that thing. If you try a multi shot, I might Ogre Magi. Nope. Please no, don't remove it. I'm just gonna remove it. It's pretty good. That's a pretty big deal, because that was 7 damage to the face. I think this, this is the point where we just don't win now. Mm. Let's see. There's no real, real play here. No consider, con consideration for anything else. I guess you could go for like a crazy deadly shot, but you never really want to like <laughs> try to like remove and still stay behind, stay less behind. Okay. Might actually be forced into a turn like that now. Let's say we reckless, can we win? 1-1. One, one. I don't think so. I think we have to get a lucky deadly shot to win this game. So it has to hit the M-Gang. Okay. So at this point we should just know that we're beat. There's no coming back. And that's the problem with the stack, and that's the problem with most hunters. Like if your early, early game momentum fails, you just don't have anything to push through. If you look at the stack, we have only three late game cards, and they're very aggressive ones. Like Bomb Lobber has an effect to turn his blade, same with Reckless. It's fan of high main, it's fan of high main, but not enough to win like a value game all on its own. So we really need our early game to push through, and then we need to like, you know, protect our early game with these cards right here. You can kind of see a theme in the stack. But try it again. But yeah, you, you can't expect to win after skipping turn 2 that game, and him having as many 1-drops as he did. Looks like he was like pretty well set up to deal with our, our deck. Hmm. So this is one of our another one of our bad matchups. A lot of cheap removal in, in Shaman. 
a lot of ways for them to uh, get ahead with things like Fire Guard and uh, and even like uh, Totem Golem, Stoneforge Axe. If we can dodge those though, we should be okay. This isn't as bad as like Rogue or Paladin though. It's like barely one of our worst matchups. Um, because they don't really have, like shamans don't really have a natural heal. They have like healing wave, but it's not really run. You don't really expect that in a 12 win deck. It's pretty lucky for him. Okay, just play on curve. Okay. So we have options here. We can coin out Senjin. Or we can coin out the defender. Coin out the defender and trading is a little bit more proactive. I like that better. Senjin gives a little bit of counterplay. Like you can remove the Senjin with like a crackle, then you can get a good trade, and then all of a sudden we're, you know, running another two damage in. So go with the. Uh... Plus, there's something to consider with Defender of Argus not being so good if, uh, if you're behind. And here, I guess you could also consider just hitting face. It's a little bit weaker to Urshock. Because if we go face here, you get shock. Otherwise, the 3 3 and 3 2 should be the same. Because if he's using a spell to remove, this isn't going up in damage because this is the thing he's going to remove. So, do we play around Urshock is a question? Or do we value 3 damage to the face? I think here, it's fine either way. There are small things. You can play like a 4 mana 2 attack guy, but it's not very likely either in a Shaman 12. I'll go face. I think it's a free 3 damage. Yeah. Ends up being a free 3 damage. So now we kind of want to fade. I think it's better to 1 3. Although next turn, if we do. Four now we can do one four. It's just weak against like flame tone if he buffs it up with like any shattered sun, any buff. But I think just a curve is urging us to uh, play this. So these are the turns we really want to start protecting our our board. Start just like pushing in damage with our uh, with our removal. Got pretty lucky with those rolls. You're in trouble now. Here, a deadly shot would just end it. So I guess we'll just draw a deadly shot. Usually it works. Usually that works all the time. Not a big deal. I'm gonna keep building. I don't think it's a bad play. Like here, so that if you were thinking that you want to make the switch now, you could chicken hero power, but this pretty much represents the same amount of damage as the hero power and chicken, since it still three, which is one plus the two. But this could stick in twice, and if it gets two attacks in, then this is better. And that's always what you're thinking about with the switch is like, is it really better to uh, like? Overall, can I get more damage out? Because as Hunter, this is the only class that plays this way in Arena. It's, your, it's a damage calculation game where you're trying to see like, oh, can I fit in, like, what play, what line of play fits in more damage, um, you know? But, yeah, I'm gonna stop talking before I sound like more of a nerd. Okay. Yeah, some days you're just fucking lucky. So, lethal setup. Pretty full health. Can't really expect to heal from that class. And, voila. He's 12. It was a good deck. And usually you should curve like this. Poof. 
All right, that's our uh, once a week uh, class video. And uh, I'm Tempest Storm Ratsma. You can check out my live stream at twitch.tv slash Ratsma or my YouTube at um, Ratsma, youtube.com slash Ratsma HS or Ratsma TV. Ratsma TV. Yeah. But thanks for watching. See you guys next week.